Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. This week on World Refugee Day, the Archwell Foundation recognized the resilience and strength of individuals who've been displaced from their homes due to conflict, persecution, or violence. Committed to uplifting communities, the Archwell Foundation supports those resettling, addressing both immediate displacement needs as well as long-term care, particularly for women experiencing social isolation. Through the Welcome Project, these needs are cared for through social connection and access to vital resources. This week, the Archwell team participated in a volunteer day to assemble personal care kits for refugee families. Those kits included essential items and will be donated to the families through the partnership with the International Rescue Committee, which has been around since 1933. It's very interesting to see the type of organizations that the Archwell Foundation really engages in partnerships with, the IRC, World Central Kitchen, really incredible organizations that do wonderful work. Show up and do good. This week, another sordid tale from a royal correspondent has been debunked. It's been reported that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan are not looking for a home in the UK. A royal commentator telling lies? Shocking. Not. Now, talk of the raspberry jam and dog biscuits continues to be a thing. <laughs> which is insane to me. British tabloids being stuck on writing stories saying that Meghan's jam and dog biscuit post by Nacho was her attempt to outshine the trooping and Catherine's return. On the other end, there are articles obsessing over who, just who, got that other jar of raspberry jam. <laughs> the obsession is real. There are also royal fans on social media somehow attempting to make the argument that Meghan gifting the dog treats is undignified for a royal. I'm like, one minute you people say that she's not royal, then the other minute you're making up different protocols and expectations that she is somehow not abiding by as a royal. Like, pick a lane and stay in it. And also, her royal highness, Queen Elizabeth, sold dog biscuits and jam and booze and a slew of other products. So you're telling me it's dignified when Queen Elizabeth does it, but somehow it's not when Meghan does it? I need you guys to be so for real. There was an interesting conversation on talk TV where one of the guests essentially summed up a lot of my thoughts when it comes to the British royal family. It is much like a soap opera. It's all about the drama. It's incredibly antiquated. It leaves you wondering what its place or relevance in the modern day really is. As somebody who's a Republican, and not an American Republican, one that wants yeah, to abolish... Yeah, let me make that very yeah, clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are to, two very different yeah, people. Yeah, that's right, one that wants to abolish the monarchy. Yeah. Do you like Meghan or dislike her? I, I honestly don't care. I think, I think the, the question... Well, that would be helpful for yeah, the show. Yeah. <laughs> the, question, the question speaks volumes. Is, has Trooping the Colour lost its luster if it's getting upstaged by dog biscuits? You know, like, the, it is... The, where, where, the, the best argument for the royal family is somebody who doesn't agree with them. It might, it's a soap opera for people to enjoy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, but amongst the very, very wealthy. If you neither like the royal family nor soap operas, uh, like me, there's not really a lot in it for you. If it's one thing that the UK tabloids and certain royal fans will do is create fanciful narratives surrounding things that Meghan does, even the most mundane of things, or things that are done by people who are close to Harry and Meghan. Nacho posted this on an Instagram story that wasn't even a permanent post. Personally, I feel like a lot of the conversations are centered surrounding these dog biscuits and jam as a distraction for the meager crowds and the very rambunctious not my king protesters a couple people came into the comments of the prior video talking about um, the coverage that they saw of the trooping and a lot of them mentioning that some of the media outlets were attempting to downplay the presence of the protesters so is this just another distraction tactic Personally, I think so. So did they mention that? They kept that out of the news pretty good, right? Mm. 
but they were clearly there because they were telling on Twitter yesterday that they were there protesting and yeah I don't see the monarchy you know. what I did find interesting was I took uh, images of the royal of the mal um in front of buckingham palace literally minutes before the royal family took to the balcony and uh, honestly the place was half empty i have the images to prove it and by the time that uh, the members of the royal family emerged on the balcony um the the mal was still half empty and that is a fact and 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 people can say oh it's because it's raining absolute nonsense I have seen it when it has been, you know, hail and storm when Queenie was still alive and that place was rammed. You could not get a cigarette paper between people, right? And on Sunday, it was all I could do, frankly, to avoid legacy media and social media. The sucking up to the royal family was absolutely disgusting. What an odious sight to see a media supporting the oppression of people. Now, again, I'm sure there will be people listening to this, watching this in the comments who completely disagree with me, who think that the royal family is worthy and that we should keep them. People are always worried that we're suddenly going to be led by, you know, a kind of presidential figure. Well, we don't have to have that. It doesn't have to be either or, does it? Um, but the fact is, away from social media and away from legacy media and the high promotion of it, royalty is not popular. It is not popular and we do need a referendum. That is only right. In my opinion, the farce of royalty must be consigned to the past. An elite ruling family is entirely wrong in our world. The imbalance between the haves and the have nots is too great. Absolutely too great. So for me, it is time to change and abolish the monarchy. Hi, Right Wing Media. Over the weekend, we saw the staggered return to public life of the Princess of Wales. Much was written about her return whilst, we believe, still receiving chemotherapy and about how she feels about it. Front pages everywhere. Much to Nigel Farage's annoyance, I'm sure. However, you didn't want to leave it there, did you? So what you did was you created another narrative. Not very subtly as well, if you don't mind me saying so, about how Meghan Markle was trying to steal Kate, not that I know her, but I feel like I can call her that, steal Kate's thunder by launching biscuits the day before. Now, this is a regular theme of the right-wing media, to always print an article about Meghan Markle whenever they write an article about Kate. And what they try to do is create a narrative of Meghan trying to take Kate's limelight. But of course, none of us would have known anything about those biscuits or care about those biscuits unless actually the right wing media hadn't promoted them. So all the articles in, on GB News about it, on Talk TV, in the Daily Mail, all the usual suspects, none of us would have known a thing except that you want to keep Meghan Markle in the public eye because she sells papers for you. And a reminder before any comments come up going, we hate Meghan, we don't like this. Actually, in fairness to Harry and Meghan, I don't know either of them, but I feel like I can call them that. They don't create these articles. The media keeps them churning out because they need you to buy papers. And they know if they put those two names in a paper, people buy it. So actually what they're doing is manipulating you. But the, the effect of that is for people to be bored of hearing about Harry and Meghan and believe that Harry and Meghan keep selling out and keep wanting to be in the, in the press. The other angle, of course, which we hardly ever deal with, is the fact that Prince Harry actually took on the UK press because of this sort of nonsense and about the lies that they print about people. So they've got a little vendetta against him on top of that because he didn't buy into the royal sort of protocol of doing deals with the press secretly. So he wanted to step out. The press are pissed off. He took them to court. They're even more pissed off. They keep writing articles. And that's how we got to Meghan's biscuits. So anyway, this is just to say, I'm never quite, quite sure why you always choose to do that. But it's interesting, isn't it? So I would just say, leave them alone and let Kate get on with her recovery. And then we can all go and live happily ever after. As the accidental disruptor said, the press uses the names of Harry and Meghan to boost engagement. More engagement means more money. But I am still shocked 
by the crowds for this year's tripping, especially with the dangling of the Kate carrot. She's returning. She'll be in the carriage. She'll be on the balcony. Come see. And a surprisingly low amount of people did. Now, I would often get comments from listeners who live in the UK who would say, don't be swayed or don't be too quick to believe what is said in the tabloids. Now, obviously, the tabloids are the tabloids, right? And that it's not always a true reflection of what the average person thinks. And we've been told just how popular and strong the monarchy is under the rule of King Charles. But those crowds, are those crowds an indication of how things are going to be in the future for the monarchy? In an age where authenticity reigns supreme, deference to public figures, royals included, is declining. So it'll be interesting to see the state of the monarchy within the next five years or within the first year of the reign of a King William. Tough times ahead. Yeah, as people probably know, I, I think the monarchy is the exact antithesis of a democracy because it's based on one thing, that any child born into that family, particularly the core family, has greater human value than in any other child. That's what it is. I saw the teacher of one of the royal children, I think it was the firstborn of um, um, William, uh, a teacher curtsying to a four-year-old kid. Come on. Oh, I see. Thank you. You know, I, I just think the deference, the def deferential uh, 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 society and how much it costs. I mean, it is astonishing. Mm -hmm how much we so, happily give to them. Is, I mean, let, uh, let me give you a figure. Okay, it's really ahead. important. It's really important. Okay. I didn't know this. £28 million pounds of our money was spent on the four-day event for the coronation. Um, the National Lottery then gave them £22 million. Pounds. You might say that's nothing. I, I think, I think in a, at a time when our food banks are unable to serve the population, how is this okay? get so angry that we, you know, they manage somehow, even when, you know, the population is very, was very angry about what was, what happened to Diana, what was done to Diana, what was done to Diana, and then Camilla comes along, now she's our queen. I'm supposed to curtsy to this woman? No, I mean, Absolutely like, it is, it is not. Definitely... There was a particularly interesting article from the New Yorker entitled, King Charles is Desperate to See Grandkids He Evicted. Yikes. The article states that a recurring theme in the media narrative around King Charles is that he is a kind man who deeply loves his family, yet tragically, duty often prevents him from showing it. For example, various anonymous sources told UK press outlets that the King really wanted to see Prince Harry when he visited London last month. But unfortunately, his royal schedule was so jam-packed that he had no time to see his traitorous younger son, poor Charles. Let's not forget that the packed schedule in question was Charles attending to a garden party and hobnobbing with David Beckham. But sure, the latest round of tabloid reports seem designed to combat the idea that King Charles is a bad grandpa because he barely knows Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's children. Sure, he's only seen five-year-old Prince Archie a handful of times, and he's met three-year-old Princess Elizabeth just once, but royal expert Tom Quinn said that the king sent a gift along with a message when Lilibet celebrated her birthday at home in Montecito. As an insider told the Mirror, the king is passionate about being a part of his American grandchildren's lives, particularly after his cancer diagnosis. And might I interject to say, remember that story that we talked about earlier? The one that was debunked saying that Prince Harry and Meghan were looking for homes in the UK? That was also by this same self-proclaimed royal expert, Tom Quinn. So, yeah. It continues, the king is absolutely committed to being present in all of his grandchildren's lives. Sure, Charles. Sure. He values family above everything, and whatever the course of his relationship with his son, he would never be content with just seeing his grandchildren at an odd video call. 
Seeing Archie and Lilibet in person is a bit difficult. Part of the problem is that last year King Charles evicted their parents from Frogmore Cottage, the house they once lived in on the royal estate adjoining Windsor Castle. The Sussexes had long since moved to America, but while fleeing the UK in 2020, they did say that the house would remain their UK residence. Charles has had discussions about an official visit to the United States sometime in the future, and there is no doubt if he goes ahead, he would build in the time to visit his youngest son and his grandchildren, Quinn said. He's desperate to see them and hates the idea that Archie and Lily will not remember him as the warm, friendly grandfather he wants to be. So, perhaps we'll see King Charles pop up in California soon, or maybe there's something to those rumors about the monarch inviting the Sussexes to visit him at Balmoral Castle this summer. Don't we get the same stories of these elusive invites to Balmoral every single year? Come on, Tom. The least you could do is be original. Now the article concludes, It's just so sad that Charles can't be the grandparent he wants to be, owning to complications of a royal life and or the consequences of his own actions. Heavy on the last part. You don't have a good relationship with your son and you don't have a relationship with your grandchildren because of your own actions. Actions that he consistently continues to make for years now. There's no excuse. Charles, William, and Kate were all invited to Lilibet's christening. They declined. Every single time Harry goes to the UK, Charles is suspiciously too busy. There was only one time that he saw Harry, and that was, what, for 30 to 45 minutes? Come on now. You're not fooling anyone. But this article was particularly interesting. I do love royal shade. Richard, what could all this mean for our friends in Montecito, Meghan and Harry? Yes, I mean, remember that when um, Prince Charles then had the plans about the slimmed down monarchy, um, Harry was very much part of that. We saw that on the, the balcony at the Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee in 2012, where it was just Harry and his brother with um, Camilla and, and the King um, and Queen Elizabeth then. Yeah. And so he was central to those plans. You know, Charles thought when Harry had a family, they would be carrying out engagements, they would be sharing the duties. Um, with William. So I think time is running out. You know, if um, Harry wants to come back at any stage, he needs to do it um, while his father is still king. Because mm. I really do think that when Prince William is king, would he even take the calls from his brother? Can you imagine? I, I really can't see him letting Harry come back and have a role again. They are irrelevant now. They're, you know, they're just not wanted as part of the monarchy. Oh, never say never, Richard. It's family. Um, never say never. Yeah, maybe, perhaps, yeah. who knows? Maybe there will be some radical change, but it's it's hard to see now, particularly when all the focus is on jam. So in one breath, Eden says that Harry and Meghan are irrelevant. So if they're so irrelevant, why does Eden continue to write his columns about them? Why does he continue to have these in-depth conversations about Harry and Meghan during these, what are they, weekly panel discussions? Harry and Meghan have left four years ago. These royal commentators and royal writers could easily ignore what Harry and Meghan do and focus on their beloved worlds, but they don't do that, do they? Also, they're irrelevant and it's only about jam now, so why the sense of urgency that Harry should get into the good graces of his father and return to the fold? He's irrelevant, yet you want him to return back into the institution? How does that work? Meanwhile, Harry has already told us point blank he's not interested in returning to working within the firm. I don't know how many more times he needs to say it or how much clearer can he possibly be. A day when you would return as a full-time member of the royal family? Do you remember Meghan and Harry's Christmas card from 2018? So lovely, huh? And this is Prince William's Father's Day card from this year. So let's talk about narratives and a little bit of press bias, shall we? When Meghan and Harry got married, um, the, the negative press started and one of the main 
instigators of that was her half-sister, Samantha Markle. So she started this whole narrative of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have turned their back. So that was the, the, the tagline that they used. It was in the press all over the world, turning her back on the family. Have they turned their backs on the world or just her family? Again, Samantha Markle is the, the main instigator here. Harry's not even mentioned in this one. Meghan's Christmas card photo sparks criticism as royals turn their backs. Now, William's also showing his back with the three kids. But the tagline here is, we love you, Papa. Kate Middleton takes new photo of Prince William and kids at the beach for Father's Day. We love you, Papa. The we love you, Papa, you'll see in every single headline. We love you, Papa. Royal children wish Prince William a happy Father's Day. And here, obviously, Kate is applauded because she's the one who captured the photo. Kate Middleton captures a sweet photo of Prince William with their kids for Father's Day 2024. Kate Middleton's perfect Father's Day photo of Prince William and her children sends royal fans into a frenzy. As they say, they're left in tears over the sweet message. We love you, Papa. <laughs> the Mirror decides to speak to a body language expert about why William and the kids didn't face camera in sweet Father's Day photo. And their conclusion is, photographed from the back view, they avoid actually communicating with the camera. It suggests that this is an intimate and loving moment caught rather than a show pony one pose to please the viewer. Okay. Before and after, I put them side by side for the avoidance of doubt. Wow, there has been some frequent, frantic and furious comments from royalists on my page about the fact that myself and a lot of other people on TikTok are saying that Catherine Kate, Princess of Wales, looks substantially younger at Troopin' of the Colour than she has on previous occasions. Now, don't get me wrong, makeup is amazing. We've all seen on TikTok and other places how good makeup can transform the looks of a person. Also, I look a lot better in summer when there's sun than winter. I know I can actually look worse than this. It's terrifying, believe me, it's terrifying for me. I don't know whether it's the Emperor's new clothes. We have a saying in Yorkshire where I live, there's no one as blind as those that want to be. And that saying is basically that if people don't want to see that's something that's right in front of their own eyes, they just won't see it. To me, it seems obvious that she looks much younger and much better than she did before. I'm not saying she's not ill. I'm just pointing out the fact that today, or this weekend, she looks better than she has done probably for 10 years. If you are a royalist and you cannot see that, that is fine. We do not have to agree on everything. But 90% of the people on social media are saying there's a substantial difference. She may be ill, she may not be ill. If she is not ill, there has been a substantial breach of trust between the royal family and the British public. In fact, the public all over the world, but the British public pay for them. It wouldn't be the first time that that trust has been broken seriously. All bets are off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.